see something about myelinospiratory bypass. The history, the bad bone mass concept was first developed in 1953 by German engineer Dr. Holger Hesse and his partner that is the Danish anesthetist Henning Gruber and their initial work called as suctioning pump. And they made the resuscitator that is the amber bag which we are using now also called a sample to manufacture and market it started in 1956. And this position at first to mark led to the amber becoming a generic trademark with the bag wall mask was referred as amber bag. We are taking the ampoule that is the emergency skull. So whenever the patient is suddenly going for cardiac arrest, so immediately we will start ampooling and we will connect it with the oxygen cylinder before intubating the patient. So that is the basic airway management technique allows for oxygenation and ventilation for patients and in a more definitive way. And before endotracheal intubation, we will start ampooling and make it. Uh, definite control and uh, this manual respiratory bypass ventilator patient frequently called bagging the patient. And the purposes of uh, manual bagging that is additional oxygen. So we can uh, provide additional oxygen uh, through means of tubing and it is also used as a part of CPR when the patient's breathing is absent. And it is uh, also a temporary temporarily increased oxygen support for the patient who sir has gone for a respirator cardiac arrest and then we are connected to the patient to the ventilator. And this manually ventilate clients when off ventilator are unable to deep independent breathe independently we will start ampoling. Indications of manual respiratory breathing. So this, uh, the patient was also having an acute respiratory distress or arrest and no respirations or irregular respiration, the patient was also gasping and the patient gone for unconsciousness and in case if you are transferring the patient from one unit to another. And here we can see the components of manual respiratory bag. That is, first one you can see the amber bag, second one the ball that is connected, the third one is the face mask. This is the parts of the self-inflating bag, that is the amber bag. Here you can see the first one, the mask cushion and the inflation valve and all together it is the face mask. And that is the pressure relief valve and the, uh, which one we are giving the uh, self-filling ventilation bag. And uh, this is the area we will be connecting to the oxygen cylinder, oxygen tubing. And this is the oxygen reservoir bag. So this is the ample bag with the mask. Bag. bag wall mask, sometimes referred as commonly we used to call a sample bag, is a handheld tool to deliver positive pressure ventilation of the patient who are having in this insufficient or ineffective breathing. So it contains self-inflating bag, one-way wall mask and oxygen reservoir. You can see the one-way bag, this self-inflating bag, reservoir and the oxygen tube. Wall. So, wall, what it does, it prevents the backflow of air or secretions into the back and also it prevents the back from contamination. This is the parts of the self-inflating bag, that is the amber bag. Here you can see the first, the mask cushion and the inflation valve and all together it's a face mask and that is the pressure relief valve and the is the emergency skull so whenever the patient is suddenly going for cardiac arrest so immediately we will start moving and we will connect it with the oxygen cylinder before intubation. Additional compli uh, components we can see that is the positive and respiratory pressure that is the peak commonly what we call dust that is the for better positive airway pressure measures the patient was are having any respiratory problem like the COPD and here a covered port may be incorporated into the valve uh, to allow inhalatory medicines to be injected into the airflow that is uh, 
in case additionally we want to give an inflatory lumbar station anything, we can have it in this hall. And the pressure lift wall, often we call it as pop-up wall, is uh, included in pediatric versions and sometimes in even adult versions also to prevent the over-inflation of the lungs. And there is a bypass clip is uh, typically uh, incorporated in valve assemblies, the medical protocol calls inflation at a rate beyond the, so sometimes we may be inflating beyond the limit. So this will be causing a pressure cutoff followed by the pop up wall. And there will be connector connection for a pressure or flow meter can be included in the valve or mask. So some bags you can see it has a strap to assist the pressure provider. This is the parts of the self-inflating bag, that is the amber bag. Here you can see the first, the mask cushion and the inflation valve and all together it's a face mask. And that is the pressure relief valve and the, uh, which one we are giving the uh, self-filling ventilation. So how does it work? This valve directs the gas inside via one way valve when compressed by rescuer. So this gas is delivered through the mask and into the patient's trachea when we are inflating that is compressing the back. So the mask that air will be inflated into the trachea and enter the prongus and into the lungs. And for effective, a bag wall mask must deliver between 500 and 800 milliliters of air to an adult patient lungs. And here we can see the components of manual respiratory bag. That is, first one you can see the amber bag, second one the wall that is connected, the third one is the face mask. And they named the resuscitator, that is the amber bag which we are using now, also called a sample to manufacture and market it started in 1956. And this position at first to mark led to the amber becoming a generic trademark with the bag wall mask was referred as. And face mask, so the face mask provides uh, uh, breathing oxygen gas from a storage tank to the lungs. So oxygen mask usually cover the nose and the mouth. So when we are keeping the face mask, make sure it's covered the entire nose and the mouth uh, and it is, there are three types, it's made up of plastic or silicone or rubber. You can see the face mask, different sizes of face mask. And the pressure relief wall, often we call it as pop-up wall, is uh, included in pediatric. And there are various types depend upon the age and weight of the patient. And zero type infant that is 13 gram weight and one 26 gram, two for 41 gram and three for 54 gram and four for 76 gram and five for 102. And they made the resuscitator that is the amber bag which we are using now. So what are the uh, features of silicone face mask it's designed to ensure a tight seal so when you are placing all of the nose and mouth in the, we can pay, make it as a tight seal so there will be no wastage of oxygen or air outside so this mask are mainly available in white color and very transparent to facilitate so that we can visually inspect the breathing condition of the patient and the grip is mostly soft like a cushion to avoid unnecessary pressure on the patient's skin and the tester. So that uh, this type of mask available in various sizes. Bag wall mask. So in the bag wall mask part one that is flexible mask to seal over the patient face like it will acting as a cushion and in part two has a filter and wall to prevent backflow into the bag itself. And part 3 is a soft bag element which is squeezed, that is the amp bag which is squeezed to expel air, that is called the self-inflating bag which is helps to squeeze to expel air to the patient. You can see the bag valve mask in one hand technique. So what are the articles needed? So we need a handheld amp bag 
कप फेस मास्क टाटा कस्टमर एडाप्टर ऑक्सीजन सोर्स ऑक्सीजन ट्यूबिंग ग्लव्स मास्क बोस एंड एंड दे नेम द रिसोसिटेट दैट इज द एम्प बैग व्हिच वी आर यूजिंग नाउ आल्सो कॉल्ड द सैंपल टू मैन्युफैक्चर एंड मार्केट इट स्टार्टेड इन 1956 and this position at first to mark led to the amp becoming a generic trademark with the bag wall mask plus referred as the amp bag the history of the bag wall mask concept was first developed in 1953 by german engineer dr holger hesse and his partner that is the danish anesthetist henning gruber and their initial work on a suction pump and start inflating that is uh, start compressing the bag at a prescribed rate in a slow even motion and uh, make sure that you are allowing the bag to reinflate between the compressions and it is very helpful if you have two people want to position the head and hold the mask family in place to keep a tight seal the other person can compress the bag with the two hands and if in a patient if only one person is available we start to avoid breath and uh, that person has to hold the mask in place with one hand and compress the bag with other hand that is steadying the bag against the leg if necessary and even he may hold the mask with two hands if necessary and hold the bag and compress it against the body with the upper arm so it is uh, mainly we have to make sure you are keeping the mask in a tight seal and if this uh, two persons are available one person to position the head and hold the mask family in place and the other person compress the bag and watch to see the chest rises with each breath if not again you have to reposition the head and assure there is a good seal of the mask because sometimes it may be when we are pressing the bag uh, compressing the bag there may be chance of um, wasting the oxygen through the mouth if there is any leakage under 8 years of age one breath every 3 seconds and 8 years of age are one to one breath every 5 seconds and we have we have to count the breathing rate per minute 20 to 24 breath for infants 16 to 20 for children 12 to 16 for adolescents the bag wall mask concept was first developed in 1953 by german engineer dr holger hesse and his partner that is the danish anesthetist henning gruber and their initial bag wall mask so in the bag wall mask part 1 that is flexible mask to seal over the patient face like to be like acting as a cushion and in part 2 has a filter and wall to prevent backflow into the bag itself thank you